If Europe's single currency fails, so will the Union itself. The warning comes from the EU president who was speaking ahead of the meeting of the Eurozone's finance ministers. Ireland and Portugal appear most at risk and could be forced to use EU bailout money to save them from bankruptcy. Portugal's foreign minister says his country may even be forced to quit the euro. Let's now talk about Europe's crisis with financial analyst Max Kaiser, the man loved by the people, hated by the banks. And uh, hello to you. So tell me, do you believe the EU really is in danger of collapsing? Well, why doesn't the EU investigate? Well, let me explain something. The EU right now is investigating criminal fraudulent activity over there at the Anglo-Irish Bank. $451 million of illegal loans that are now parked in offshore accounts. Implicated are Sean Fitzpatrick, uh, David Drum, uh, Sean Quinn, the financial terrorists that are taking Ireland down. What's the government doing? Well, the last we heard from them, they were drinking heavily and hiding under their desks. Why not just investigate the criminal activity first? Put the financial terrorists in jail, then figure out what to do with the currency. Now, Max, let's, uh, let's talk about solutions here, because there are fears the contagion from Ireland's crippled banking system may spread. But if it agrees to an EU bailout, wouldn't that solve the problem for Ireland and possibly the whole union? Absolutely not. It, it, unless Ireland's willing to give up its sovereignty, unless Ireland is willing to become a debt slave, unless Ireland wants its affairs conducted by the IMF. And the IMF, everywhere they've gone, they've brought, they've brought destruction and economic mayhem. You know, they're licking their chops, waiting to get in there to cause havoc, pay themselves huge fees, give bonuses to their cadre of crony capitalists and terrorist bankers, and Ireland is quaking in its boots, and the government, unfortunately, in Ireland is not standing up for the people. It's abdicated its role as representative of the people. The people in Ireland are getting completely hammered by these banking financial terrorists. All right, so Max, I'm sorry, you're saying that instead of taking a loan out from the European Union, you're saying the IMF is not an option either? <laughs> no, the IMF is is not an option for any country that wants to remain out of the clutches of speculators and fraudulent bankers who have done all they can possibly do to steal a country's wealth loaded with debt. The, the IMF and the, and the EU and the ECB caused Ireland's crisis. So why are you going to them to ask you to solve the crisis? They're the ones that caused the crisis. The, Ireland needs to divorce itself from these financial terrorists and stand on its own two feet. Well, let's turn our attention to Portugal now, if we can. Uh, Portugal says that it may have to leave the euro. How do you think that would affect its own domestic economy? Well, I mean, it's the same case, whether it's Portugal, Ireland, Greece, or any of these other European countries. They all are facing the same problem. Bankers have been allowed to uh, conduct uh, fraudulent activity. Look what happened in Greece, for example. They allowed Goldman Sachs to come in and advise them on entering into the euro. Goldman Sachs got them to cook their books and commit fraud. And now they're in, in dire straits. So now who do they ask to help them get out of their problem? Well, they ask representatives from Goldman Sachs. This is a case of Stockholm Syndrome. These countries are being held captive by financial terrorists. And to get out of their problem, they're asking the same financial terrorists, please, sir, how do we escape the clutches of your terrorism? You know, Ireland, they went to war against the IRA, the, the Irish Republican Army, but they seem to just give a pass to, um, you know, Sean Fitzpatrick. How come for, Sean Fitzpatrick hasn't been executed by the state for financial crimes. Why? Why is he allowed to go, go free? He's a terrorist. Why is the Irish government soft on terrorism? All right, Max, if we, if we may, let's turn our attention to the past week of uh, economic news here. We had the Apex Summit just a few days ago in Yokohama, Japan. Before that, we had the G20 in Seoul. And, and really, the only agreement or possible agreement to come out of the G20 in Seoul was America and China agreeing to perhaps scale back on their currency wars. Uh, do you see that as a substantive agreement, or do you think the currency wars will continue? And can you just simplify what exactly is a currency war? Well, the currency wars are all the various countries around the world trying to debase their own currency 
to make their exports competitive. So the United States, because they have no ability to engineer any growth in the U.S., because they have spent all their money committing mass murder in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, want countries like China to voluntarily adjust their currency to help Americans continue to overconsume. And China is saying, no, we don't think that's a good idea anymore. So China is uh, engaged in bilateral currency swaps with Russia, Iran, Brazil, to give everybody huge stockpiles of each other's currency so that these countries can do business outside of the U.S. dollar as reserve currency. And this is what we're talking about, the currency war, is a post-U.S. dollar as reserve currency era. And as Robert Zolik has said just recently, he's looking for a new global currency with some kind of gold component as the U.S. dollar reserve currency era is now finished. All right, financial analyst and host of the Kaiser Report, Max Kaiser, live in Paris. Thank you.